you know, if you want to give somebody hope and inspiration, it's, you know, expose a student to what the system is really about mm-hmm. and see them desire to make change. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for me, hope is being able to pass on to others mm-hmm. that change will come mm-hmm. at some point. There's so many ways we can save our planet. What is there without hope? I just want people to find empathy. I have so much hope. Can nature bounce back? Jane Goodall made me believe in my own. The earth is Together we can save the world. Together we can. Together we will. What is your greatest reason for hope? This is Morgan Peterson, and this is the Hopecast, Georgetown edition. Welcome to the first episode of the Hopecast, a podcast inspired by the work of Jane Goodall. You just heard from Marty Tankliff on one of his reasons for hope, the students at Georgetown University. Marty was exonerated in 2007 after spending 17 years in prison. Marty was wrongfully convicted for murdering his parents in 1988 when he was just 17 years old. He is also my professor. He co-teaches a class I'm in this semester known as Making an Exoneree. In this class, I am working as an investigative journalist and quasi-lawyer to make the case of innocence for a wrongfully convicted person, a task that is incredibly daunting, challenging, yet very inspiring. You will hear more from Marty later on in the podcast. I mentioned Marty and this Georgetown class because there are two reasons for why I have such a strong sense of hope during this challenging time we find ourselves in, graduating college during a global pandemic. As I approach graduation jobless and with no idea where I or my closest friends will be living in the next six months, I frequently get overwhelmed and disheartened. However, What has kept my spirits high and belief in education and the future of our country optimistic is my participation in Marty's class. We are taking on one of the most pressing and complex issues in the United States, the criminal justice system. I am trying to prove the innocence of a man called Melvin, who has spent more of his life in prison than out free, a task that is almost impossible. Nevertheless, I have never felt more hopeful about the future of our country. Through my class, I am constantly witnessing the incredible talents and passion of my Georgetown peers. I am hearing from selfless and accomplished guest speakers. I am talking to the motivated and optimistic family members of my client. I am utilizing the powerful platforms offered through social media. I am working alongside intelligent forensic technology specialists. And most importantly, I am listening to the astounding wisdom and resilience of Melvin the man who has been in prison for 23 years for a crime he did not commit. These people keep me hopeful for our ability to get Melvin out of prison, for the future of our criminal justice system, and for the future of our country. Jane Goodall has five reasons for hope. The younger generation, the human brain, the resilience of nature, the indomitable human spirit, and the power of social media. The discussion of my Georgetown class brings me to my five reasons for hope, a list that's similar yet different to Jane's. The younger generation, education, technology, social media, and human empathy. When I first learned of Jane's five reasons for hope, I remember hearing her last reason, the power of social media, and feeling like it seemed a little out of place. Initially, I found it strange to think that something so pervasive and human-made as social media could be central to cultivating hope for the future. However, now I also find myself turning to social media and technology as a source of hope. For an example, let's consider the Making an Exoneree class I'm in right now. It's acknowledged that the legal avenues for exoneration often take years, so despite our best intentions, we will not be getting our client out of prison at the end of our five-month semester. As a result, a key part of the class is the creation of a short documentary and social media campaign. A strategic social media campaign has the ability to reap numerous positive benefits as it serves to amplify the client's story. It allows the case to reach the eyes and ears of audiences that could help bring him justice. 
It's examples like these that squander my fears and anxieties of the power of social media and remind me of its many benefits. The human race is becoming increasingly more powerful and capable of solving problems through increased connection, awareness, and education. So used intelligently and strategically, social media can achieve just that. Interestingly, my professor Marty feels similarly. Let's listen to why he sees hope in technology. I think the advent of technology, especially video, mm -hmm. has completely changed the way we look at the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. You know, for years and years and years, you heard African Americans and Spanish people and, and minorities talking about the abuse at the hands of law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And so many people didn't believe it. All of a sudden, the videos started to come out. People started getting a whole new perspective of the criminal justice system. To finish, I want to lay out my conceptualization of hope, grounded in the teachings of Jane Goodall, and give a message to my future self, who was hopefully employed. Jane has dedicated her life to storytelling, to imparting knowledge on humanity, and in doing so, she has instilled hope in thousands of people. For me, hope is the desire and ability to impart hope in others. Hope is a tool, it's a catalyst for change and action. To be hopeful is to be resilient and grounded. It's feeling like you have the ability and or potential to take action towards a specific goal. To describe it as a visual, it's a sense of knowing that there is light at the end of the tunnel, no matter how small the light is. My belief in hope stems from my experiences in education and being inspired by my empathetic peers and professors who dedicate their time, energy, and knowledge to tackling our most complex social justice issues. As I look to my own unknown future, I find comfort in Jane's story. She by no means had a laid out five or 10 year plan when she was 22 years old. Instead, she lived in the moment. She made connections everywhere she went and she jumped at any opportunity that came her way. I'm doing my best to operate with that mindset, which I think is especially important while living in a pandemic in which there is so much uncertainty with each passing day. Although I don't know what I want to do, one thing I do know is I want to make a difference in people's lives. I want to instill hope in others. I want to help our country move forward in its journey to equity and justice for all human beings. I'm grateful to people like Marty Tankliff and Jane Goodall who inspire confidence in myself that I have the power to make change in people's lives. And they also, every day, inspire confidence in others that change is possible and hope is a powerful tool to get us there. Please look out for the next installment of the Hopecast, Georgetown Edition, in two weeks' time. In the meantime, thank you for listening and have a hopeful day.